Hey, what's up, Discovery Church Online? Thanks for tuning in. If you like our content and want to stay up to date on all that's happening here at Discovery, then download our free app in the App Store, follow us on social media, or visit us online at ilovediscovery.church. This week, our senior pastor, Jason Hanish, is teaching on encountering God. And so whether you're, you're, you're visiting or you've been here for a while, you're here and God has, I believe this message is, is timely for your life as well. Um, just before I jump into it though, next Sunday is football Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday. Thank you for praying for the Philadelphia Eagles. Come on, everybody. <laughs> Woo! Everybody, once, down with the dynasty. You ready? Down with, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. So we're excited about football Sunday though. Um, I see some Patriots fans and I'm feeling bad. Okay. Uh, so I love you though. And so football Sunday though is coming up this coming Sunday and wear your team jersey. It's going to be fun. We're going to have some like tailgate food and it's going to be a unique experience, uh, but definitely it's going to be impactful. We're going to have some uh, great words, some great testimonies as well. And then after that, this next series that we're jumping into, we're calling as long as we both shall live. And you may, you may be familiar with those types of vows or, or till death do us part as long as we both shall live. Um, and so the, the series is going to be about how do you, I mean, that sounds, that sounds good, but it's easier said than done. How do we actually do that? How do we, how do we have long, healthy, successful marriages? And so if you are single, though, or not married, I'm not going to leave you out. There's going to be a lot of just content in here that really applies to your life as well. But I'm excited about the, that series. We'll go over the five, those five key commitments that you and I need to make in order to have some long, healthy, forever marriages. So uh, looking forward looking forward to that with you coming up in February. But today, um, I want to talk to you about today uh, about God encounters. How many of you know that God wants to encounter you? Like, like he does, he really does. And I really, I think that we have this tendency in Christianity to have this cerebral, cognitive kind of relationship with God. I, I do. It's just, I mean, we learn it, we think it, we, it's a relationship that is, that is more mental than it is but can I tell you that you, you cannot understand God fully unless you experience him? You, you can't. It, we, I mean, and, and, uh, man, nothing against study. I love Bible study and the word of God, but, but this part of the Christian life that I call encounters was always intended to be where you, inc- when you encounter God, you're never the same. You are never the same when you encounter God. Um, let me give you a first scripture, John 14, verse 21. Jesus says that those who obey my commandments are the ones who love me. Look at the language here. And because they love me, my father will love them and I will love them. He's like painting this picture of this this relationship. You know, God wants to have a personal relationship with you, one that is one that is very intimate, according to the Bible, one that's characterized by by love and knowing each other. So let me ask you a question. What is like a word that you would use to characterize your relationship with God? What, what is, is for, for some of us, if we we're honest, it would be like, you know, distant. You'd be like, I'm over here. He's over there. Uh, I want to be close. Just don't really know, know how it wouldn't be like, like what the scriptures are describing here. Or I think that could be best described as intimate. Like God desires to have a intimate relationship with you. Now, we don't use that language very often outside of marriage, but honestly, it's, 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 the, it's probably the best word that would describe the type of love relationship that God does want to have with you. He wants to love you, and he wants to be loved by you. And then he goes on to say, and I will reveal myself to each one of them. Each one. Now, it's, so it's not for a select few. It's not for a certain super spiritual or super, super gifted or, or weirdos or something like that. No, God wants to actually show up in your life and encounter you personally. Like he, he, he does. That's his, that's his plan. He wanted to have a relationship with you where it was just more than cerebral, more, more than just thinking and cognitive, but personal. Um, and, and by the way, we don't, we, we know this in other relationships. We know that our relationships have to move from a cognitive to a, an intimate level. If we want them to be strong, isn't that right? Like in every other relationship, like w- with my wife, we, ha- I have to have some type of connection and, and interaction in order for us to have a healthy 
marriage. And we're going to get there in a moment, but can I have you to come up here, Veronica, just to paint this illustration? Welcome, Pastor Veronica, my wife, you guys. Come on. Look at, show them. No, show them. Show them what she's wearing. Ah! <laughs> she felt so bad. Stay, stay right there. Last week, if you missed it, stay right there. Um, she was ragging on those Raiders, so this is like a makeup. So, this is, so my wife, I know my wife. I know her really well. We have done um, like countless things studies together as far as like knowing each other so we we've done the five love languages have you guys ever done that gary chapman so i know her love languages which by the way they constantly change <laughs> she's like you know it was like giving gifts and it's acts of service then it's quality time and then it's like like words and i i figured it out she's trying to get to all five so she can just be like what have you done for me lately kind of stuff you know what i mean <laughs> i know your tricks so anyway but but we, I know, we've done spiritual gift surveys, we've done personality profiles, like DISC personality profile, Myers-Briggs personality profile, all these different things. So I know, I know this woman. But in order to really know her, say, say this here is like my, my little love language, it's my little printout of Veronica. And I'm like, yes, oh, that's good. Yeah, she's, she, really, she really likes that when all, she's just sitting over there, just she, what she wants is me. She just wants me, and I'm over here, and, and oh, I, I know she likes, uh, you know, gifts and stuff, so I'm going to get her some flowers. I'm going to go ahead and put the flowers. I'm going to put them over here, and I'm like, oh, she's going to like those, and I come back over here, and, and I know she likes spending quality time, and so my quality time is going to be like, I'm just going to read about her some more. Oh, look at those gifts she has. Look at that. Oh, she's so cool. I love my wife. And nothing against study, nothing against study. I mean, we need to study the word of God. But, but God has always intended for you and I to have a personal relationship with him. This gap was never supposed to exist. Oh, as we just in our minds are creating a relationship, but in our experiences, distant. The Bible says that if I draw near to God, what does he do? He draws near to me. This, this is what that that. This is supposed to be the picture of your relationship with God. You know that? It's supposed to be personal and intimate. Give my wife another hand, you guys. Look, that is my deepest passion for you, honestly. It's for you to know God that way. It's for you to encounter God in such a way that you just love him. You just fall in love with God. You know him intimately and personally, and he reveals himself to you in glory and in power. That is, I, I desire that so much for my life. I desire it for your life. And honestly, can I just tell you the goal today, our goal today is to encounter Jesus. That's our goal. Like I'm, I'm just, I'm just showing you what's up my sleeves. Today, we are going to encounter God. All right, we are going to ask him to reveal himself to us. Now, I studied all the different encounters. I think I studied all the encounters where God just showed up and revealed himself. All right, Old Testament, New Testament, where Jesus just kind of shows on, on the scene. And in every one of those encounters, listen, the same pattern exists that God does when God shows up in someone's life and encounters them. There's, a, there's a, 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 the same pattern that God does in that encounter and after that encounter exists in every single one, and that's my message to you today. I'm going to share with you the pattern of an encounter. Here's my hope, is that you'll begin to just not only recognize it, but cooperate with God in the journey he wants to take you on in encountering him. That's, that's, that's my, my hope today, and, and, I'm, and I'm being very transparent in that hope. In a moment here at the end of the service, we're just gonna we're just gonna worship and encounter God and ask Him to do something special, unique in in our lives and reveal Himself to us. Now, I could have I could have went to any Bible character, honestly, to share these same three points with you. I could I could have went to any Bible character where God had it, where there was this encounter. That, and by the way, there's a lot of them. To which some of you I know would say like, well, that's like good for Bible characters, but not. Me, I mean, I'm not, I'm not like that. I'm not, I, I, and to which I want to go with you to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Here's my answer to that. If you think this isn't for you, encounters and this type of experience with God and relationship with God is not for you, 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Whenever though they, and you're the they, by the way, I'm the they, the they is the church in this. Whenever though they turn to face God, here it says, if you ever decided that you wanted to have that kind of closeness, as Moses did, wow, 
You, you know, that wasn't just for Moses, that's for you. Look, it says God jumps in. Look what, look what happened. Here it says, he jumps in, removes the barrier, whatever that thing is, whatever's in the way, God removes the veil, and there they are, face to face. How many of you want to see the face of God? How many of you want to encounter him in that way? They suddenly, notice what happens. Here's the progression. They, they'll recognize that God isn't, he's not distant. He's not far. He's not in heaven. In fact, it said of Jesus, he is Emmanuel, God with me. He's right here. God is a living, personal presence. And that's what I want for you. That's what I want for me, uh, for you to, that he's, you'll recognize it says that he's not a piece of chiseled stone. And when God is personally present, a living spirit, that old constricting legislation, and I want you to put that word religion maybe right there, because that's what he's talking about. Just that constricting re religious legislation. It's, it's the, I don't want to, but I guess I have to. Well, I don't want to go to church today, but I guess I, I should go to church today. I don't particularly enjoy reading my Bible, but I know I should read my Bible. So I'm just going to go ahead and read it anyway. It's constricting, he says. That just was, is, it'll, it'll, it'll bind you. That is not how God uh, wanted us to live, called us to live. He says, you're going to recognize it's obsolete. We're free of it, all of us. And I love this. He says, nothing between us and God. There's nothing between us. Notice the transition now. Because this is where we're going today. He says, our faces shining with the brightness of his face. So notice, the closer you get to God, the more you start to look like God. This is important because that's the whole purpose behind it all. And so we are transfigured. And that's just a fancy word for when you encounter God, he, he, he changes the way you look. He just, he just changes you. He just, he's gonna, there's a transformation that will take place. We're transformed or transfigured much like the Messiah. Our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like him. Now that's the goal of an encounter. The goal of an encounter with God isn't to get a warm fuzzy. The goal of an encounter with God isn't for personal entertainment. The goal of an encounter with God is to connect you to your purpose. That's the whole goal. And I'm telling you, this, this is the same pattern that exists every time God encounters someone. It was always for the intended reason that God wants to connect you to your destiny. Every time. And I'm telling you, I could have I I pulled any... I was actually going to teach on Paul today. And I had my points. I had some scriptures already and midway through the week the lord just put isaiah on my heart and i said okay god this is, this is what we're used but it would have been i'm telling you it would have been the same points it would have been the very same pattern maybe worded differently but the very same points given you today uh that i would have given you if it would have been paul so let me let me let me share with you what an encounter looks like and i'm gonna give you the verse first in your outline if you have one i'm gonna give you the verse first and then we're gonna get the feeling let's go to isaiah chapter six Starting in verse 1, it says, in the year that King Uzziah died. Now, if you don't know the history of that, it may, that timeline might not make sense. So King Uzziah was 16 years old when he became king. Imagine that, being 16 years old, and now you're king of a, of a nation. He was one of probably the better kings of Israel, but um, as, as he was reigning and during his reign, he just got off track somewhere along the way, and, and, and uh, he... he didn't end well. He didn't. He started well, but didn't. He didn't end well. And what happened was really, uh, he treated the presence of the of the Lord with contempt. The Bible says. So in those days, you had a protocol. There was a certain protocol to enter God's presence. You couldn't just walk up into the temple. There was there was a protocol. There were Levites. There were sacrifices. There was incense. There was a there was a process. And there and I don't have time to go into all the beautiful, uh, you know, analogies that are made from the from those te from those the process, but. King Uzziah just bypassed it all, said, I'm, I'm above that. I'm king. I don't need, I don't need to you know, sacrifice anything. I don't need to wait for you. I don't need to wait for a certain season or time. I'm king. I go up in the presence. And he just walked up in there, bypassing all protocol into the presence of God. So God found pride in his heart. And anytime, listen, anytime you find pride is found in your heart, you are going to be headed for a downfall. Which, which is why we need to constantly be humbling ourselves and, and humbling our life before God. So God struck Uzziah, King Uzziah, with leprosy. And he died a very, um, it, was, it was just a, 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 a terrible way to die, leprosy. 
but it was one that was full of like, like disgrace. He died a very disgraceful death. And during that time is when now it picks up. It's during that time where the, the, because the king is dead, the nation is in ruin, the nation's in chaos, there's an uproar in, in, in Israel. So during that time where uh, Isaiah is saying, man, the king is dead, the nation's in an uproar, there's chaos all around, he says, in that time, I saw the Lord. I want to pause right there for just a moment because it's usually a crisis that happens that, that makes us turn to God. Can I just give you some free pastoral advice? Don't wait for a crisis to happen to turn and pursue Jesus. Don't, don't wait for that. Like, you, can, you, you should do that today. Don't wait for a crisis to happen because God won't cause an evil thing to happen, but he sure will allow something to happen in your life that will humble you and cause you, all with the hopes of you turning again to seek God. So he says, man, it was in this time that King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. Notice what he saw. He said he was seated on a throne, high and exalted, and the train of his robe filled the temple. So he saw God. Check this out. He saw a bigger God than he had in his mind. He said, oh, my. Man, the nation is in, his, is in uproar and chaos, but God, you're amazing. You're huge. You're massive. You're awesome, God. You're just bigger than I thought then look what happened next above him were ang- our seraphs now that's just a bi- the bible word for angels but these weren't like the muscular artistic angels playing harps right these were it says he had they each with six wings two wings they covered their face two wings they covered their feet and with two wings they were flying and they were calling to one another and they were saying they were they're calling this to one another holy hey check it out holy 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 is the lord god almighty and this is what isaiah sees all that to say that isaiah received an amazing revelation of how awesome god was that in the middle of the turmoil and chaos that was his life he got a picture of how awesome god was all that to say point number one this is the process that god wants to do in your life through encounters and that is god wants to reveal himself to me God wants to reveal himself to me. Do you believe that today? I hope today that you would, you would really believe that God wants to show up in your life personally. He wants to show you that he's more powerful and bigger than you currently see him. And you say, well, all right, Jason, that sounds good and all, but like, how do I do that then? How, how do I get that revelation? How, how is that going to be revealed to me? Okay, could it be that, um, I mean, God wants, to, God wants to make himself known to you. He wants this relationship with you. He wants to speak to you. But the problem is his first language isn't English. Do you understand that? Like God does not exist in the same realm and world you live in. Jesus actually says in John chapter 4 that those who worship the Father must worship him in spirit and in truth. You see, God, you can't encounter God in your physical realm, in your natural sight. God needs to be encountered in the spiritual Yes, there is, there is natural byproduct and effects that happens in the natural from a spiritual encounter, but could it be that God is desperately trying to know you and love you and reveal himself to you, but we're not looking in the right area? That we're not seen with the right eyes? Do you know there's, there's, there's these eyes that you see with, but God is giving you other eyes to see the Spirit. There's other eyes, and, and that's actually what Ephesians chapter 1 says. Uh, or Ephesians 1.18 is talking about, the Apostle Paul, he says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be open or enlightened. Did you know your heart has eyes? Your heart, it, it, could it be that, that, that we haven't disciplined the eyes of our heart to see the spiritual things? And maybe this is why that we're not getting revelation and hearing from God. And this relationship seems so distant as he's over here, I'm over there, because you're trying to know him in a cognitive or in a mental or even in a natural way when God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So he says, hey, you need to, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know. I mean, you got to know him. You can't know him like that. You got to, you got to know him this way. The hope to which he's called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance 
and his holy people. Man, if you, in Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13, it actually says this is the only way you can know God. The only way he's going to show up in your life is, is through the eyes of your heart. That's the only way. Jeremiah 29, 13, you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your understanding. No, right? That's not what it says. You'll seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your intellect, with all of your wisdom, with all of your mind, with all of your might. None of those things. He says, you'll seek me and find me when you seek me with all of your heart. God wants to reveal himself to you. This is so important. For, and I'm hoping that you would come to a place where you say, God, I want, I want to know you more. I want, I want you to reveal yourself to me. God, show up in my life. Reveal yourself. This is a critical step in the process of, of God encountering and being personally present in your life. It's critical, but it doesn't, it doesn't stop there. Notice the progression. We're going to continue. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 4. It says, In the sound of their voices, these are the angels now, the seraphs, the doorposts and thresholds shook. And the temple was filled with smoke. That's the presence of God. He shows up. Notice what happens. And Isaiah said, oh, my, I can't go there. Woe to me. I cried, I am ruined. I'm unclean. See, whenever you see how big God is, you always see how small you are. You will. And herein lies the tension. This is, this is the, a challenge in encountering God. There will always, every, every encounter with God, will always, this tension will always exist. Whenever you see how awesome, how amazing, how immeasurable and awesome God is, the very next thing you're going to experience is how unclean you are. That's the, in that there, there lies the tension of, because, oh God, wow, you're amazing, you're awesome, but I can't go there because I know what I did last week. Because I know my secrets. Because I know my habits. I know, and, and, and I know my issues. So, so how am I, man, I'm unclean, he says. I'm, I, I, I'm a man of unclean lips, is what he says. So he has a bad language. He has like a foul mouth. Isaiah apparently has, it's, 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 he does. So he's like, and I live among people who are cussing up a storm too. And my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. But notice what happens. God never leaves you there. He says, Then one of the seraphs flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which was taken with tongs from the altar. And, and if that might not make sense. If you don't, there would have been an altar there because in the Old Testament, you, they would sacrifice animals and, and even incense to God. And so what, what, what he's saying is, is is one of the angels grabbed one of the live hot coals off of the altar and came, and, and he says, and he touched my mouth. He took that piece of that coal, that hot coal, which, by the way, we don't sacrifice animals. We're doing any of that now, nowadays. We don't do that because there was a perfect, spotless, blameless lamb that was slain once and for all, past, present, future sins, all taken care of by Jesus Christ. So the New Testament way of saying this would have, could be like this, that that angel took Jesus off the altar. And came and touched my mouth. And he said, see, this has touched your lips and your guilt is taken away. And your sin is, in tone, uh, is atoned for. In every encounter story of the Bible, this second step happens. Now, it looks different because God is a personal presence and a personal spirit. In, in every, it, it might look different, but this second step happens every time. First, you see how big God is. You get this revelation of who he is. Then you'll realize, number two, God wants to cleanse me. God, you might want to write this down, extra note takers, write down change above cleanse. God wants to change me. God wants to cleanse me. He wants to do something in me. He's not going to leave me in the condition that I'm currently in. So if you're not saved, God wants to, God wants to show up and cover your past sins. He wants to set you free from that. But it's, it's, it goes even beyond that. It's this continual process of becoming more and more like Christ. That scripture in 2 Corinthians that we started with, it says that it talks about the incremental. It says that we're being changed into the likeness of God, that it happens gradually. It happens step by step. As we, as we get closer to God, he's getting closer to us, and we're becoming more like him. There's another translation of that verse in 2 Corinthians that you're probably more familiar with that says that we are being changed from glory to glory. That's the process that God, it's just an incremental change. It means, it means little by little, step by step, as God encounters us and we get closer to him, man, I become more like him. I go from glory 
to glory, to glory. And none of us are fully glorious yet. There's, there's, there's glory. There's more glory for every single one of us, okay? So all of us have different issues that need to be cleansed, that need to be changed, that have maybe bad language like Isaiah. Maybe there's different habits or addictions or something like that. But I'm telling you, God, God says, you know what? Not only do I want to encounter you, but I want to cleanse you. So we have this, because here's, here's another challenge is that, yes, we're saved. We're set free from that. But even after that, here I am, and I still have habits. And I still have bad language, or I still have these issues, which every single one of us have. Okay, every single one of us have issues still that God is still working out because, again, we're going from glory to glory. We're not fully glorious. We're, we're still being changed. Okay, now, now, from the beginning of time, God's system, the process that God has used to change people has always been and has always been in the context of relationships. That has always been. God has always used relationships to bring that incremental glory to glory change into people's lives, which is why we do small groups here at Discovery. They're launching next week. Now, I'm telling you, when you look at those groups, and you get that pamphlet. You should have got some on the way in. You look at that pamphlet, and you see what they're studying, men's study of Matthew or couples strengthening bonds or whatever it is. That's not really the real purpose. It's not. Now, you're, gonna, you're probably going to study the Bible and learn some stuff, but the real purpose of all these groups is to get you in relationship with other people so that you can get to the point where you can just say and have enough trust with someone to say, hey, guess what? This is what I got. And someone can have enough, enough level of relationship with you that they can go, hey, you probably don't know this. Because every one of us knows some of our issues, okay? Every one of us know, okay, I know this about me, I know this about me. But then there's the other parts of us that that we don't know but can i tell you it's everyone else does okay there, there are parts about us that we don't even know are messed up but everyone else are like man i wish he he would figure i wish he'd get a revelation already there's people on your row that 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 you're guilt you're thinking right now truer words have never been spoken come on get them give them a revelation lord please help them right because you just so you need some people in your life that are gonna and i actually had that when i was leading groups before i was, became a pastor i was a small group leader years ago, and, and one of the guys, it was a men's group, one of the guys came up to me after a group and said, hey, Jason, I don't know if you know this, but you tend to, and he began to tell me, and I was just like, I was like a little discouraged at first, I was like, man, what, do I, really, and he prayed with me though, and, and, and we continued to the group, he held me accountable, and sometimes he would go, hey, you're doing it again, and I'm like, ah, oh, dang it, man, but that issue got worked out of my life through the context of that relationship, and you need somebody in your life that loves you enough to say, hey, you don't know it, but you got a little spinach right there in your teeth. You, don't, you can't see it. You don't know it's there, but please, will you get, it's bother. Everyone else can see it. Everyone can see it. I'm just going to love you enough to go get the spinach out of your teeth, okay? So every one of you have those types of issues that you can't see, and you need people in your life to do life with. You do. God wants to cleanse me. God wants to change me. He wants to bring this closeness. He wants to encounter me, reveal himself to me. But always, I'm telling you, the next step of that encounter is, is he's going to reveal that area of life that needs to be cleansed, that needs to be changed. And then it continues. It doesn't even stop there. I'm just trying to help you through the progression. You guys, I, I, I want you to encounter God. I want you to get so close to God. But this is what it looks like. It, it, it's, it, this is what that encounter looks like. Isaiah 6 uh, verse 8 and 9 tells, tells us what's hap what happens next. It says, then, after those two things happen, he says, I heard the voice of the Lord say, here's what's next, Isaiah, who shall I send? I got something I need done on earth, and I need a volunteer. Who can I send? Notice, you guys, with me, that in every place, from Moses to Paul, from cover to cover, from the leather cover to the maps. I'm telling you, this is all over the Bible, that when God shows up and encounters someone's life, this is the progression. It was Moses. He shows up, encounters Moses, changes Moses, and then gives him an assignment and says, I want you to free my people from Egypt. Paul, he, he shows up in Paul's life. He changes Paul's life, and then he says, I got an assignment. You're to bring the gospel to the Gentiles, to those who don't know the Jewish people. Every time, it's the same pattern that exists. He says, whom shall I send and who will go for us? I love that because it's showing the picture of the Trinity right there and God existing and Father, Son, Holy Spirit saying, who's going to go? And Isaiah said, 
Is that what you're looking for? You just need a volunteer? Here am I. I mean, I thought I was actually pretty unworthy. I thought I was disqualified. I thought I was messed up, to which God would say, no, I use messed up people to reach messed up people. They actually like it a little bit better if you're a little messed up and you're trying to reach them. They trust you more. They kind of like it a little better. So God reaches messed up people. God's like, I just need a volunteer. I just need someone who I've touched with the altar, with the offering of Jesus. I just need, who's going to go? Who's going to go for us? And he said, here am I. Send me. And he said, God said, go and tell this people. Notice I didn't continue it, just the dot, 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 because the rest of that is Isaiah's assignment. That's not your assignment. You can go read it, but that's Isaiah's assignment. And you need to know that God has a unique and specific assignment for your life. He does. He has a purpose for your life. I'm telling you, this is the purpose for, of every encounter. You need to realize that everybody, you guys, this is the purpose of encounter. That It's not for the Holy Spirit goosebumps. God wants to connect you to your purpose. Number three, write it down. God wants to use me. That's one of the most powerful statements that you can say that you can believe right there that God wants to use me. And that is, that is the whole, this, this progression of how God encounters, shows up in our life, reveals himself to us, and progresses us through our destiny and our purpose is, is what discovery does. It's, everything we do is kind of just rallying around how God, how God leads his people and encounters and changes his people. So let me, let me kind of paint it to you how we do. So this environment, this Sunday environment, we, the, the whole purpose of the environment is that you would know God. That's it, that you, you just get, and I pray a similar prayer every week before I come up here. I say, God, there's nothing I can say that can change them. There's no point I can give. There's nothing I can read. There's, I, God, but if you just show yourself powerful to them, if you would just show up, they would just get a revelation, God, that you are awesome, that you are mighty, that you are powerful, that you are much bigger than their problems, that God, you are here, a personal, living presence that can change them jesus that can change so this environment is just for that one moment where you would encounter the living real personal god and then god wants to progress you and cleanse you and change you so we have these small groups just to partner with the process of god to help you get in community and relationships so that you can be changed by God, and then he doesn't want to leave you there. He says, I got purpose for you. I got destiny for you, and so we have this thing called the dream team, and that's what our next steps are all about, the next step classes. Step one and step two, it's all about connecting you to that place where you'd find your spiritual gifts, find why you're here on planet earth, and start doing what God has called you to do. We say it this way, love God, love each other, change the world. Man, if we would just, if we would just, God reveal himself to us, that he loves us, that he would progress us and want us to change and cleanse ourselves through relationships, loving each other, and that man, he has a purpose, he wants to use me to change the world. That, by the way, that is everything we do here at Discovery. It, it, is, it surrounds the process of God, of him revealing himself and taking you on this journey in your life. That's, that's everything. God wants to use you. And if you are wondering what it is that you are here for, come to next steps. Come to those next step classes. It's two steps. The first step, if you want to, if you want to be used by God, here's, here's two things we know. Number one, you need a church. You need a church. You need a local church. That's step one. It's about owning the vision. And who is Discovery Church? And step two is about your spiritual gifts and what God has called you to do. That's it. You, you, you need that. Okay? Now, if you... If you want a little hint on what your purpose is, on what that unique assignment is that God has for you, let me give you a little hint. That next scripture, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. This, this just, just a hint. This might be for some of you, some of you to receive this. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. Now check it out. Who comforts us in all our troubles. So in that area where we're messed up, in the area that we have issues, in the area that we have that language or that habit or that whatever, so that, by the way, the so that's of the Bible are an amazing study. If you just read all the so that's and figure out why God is doing something so that, like the intention behind it, he says the reason why God comforted you in that issue, in that that area you thought you were messed up, so that we can comfort those 
in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. So God is saying, hey, you know that area that you're messed up in? You know that area that, that, you, that you regret? That I, want, I want to touch that area of your life. I want to change it. I want to cleanse it. And then I want to use that area of your life so you can be a comfort to other people. So, so who better to use, who, who better that could be used by God to reach an alcoholic than someone who has gone through alcohol, alcoholism from glory to glory? Come out of it on the other end, from glory to glory. Who better to reach someone going through a divorce than someone who has went through a divorce from glory to glory? Who better to reach someone with a habit or an addiction or a hang-up or, or, or anxiety or depression than someone who has come out on the other side with the comfort of God from glory to glory and say, God can do it for you. I'm telling you, so that area where you struggle, that area where you're messed up, I'm telling you, that's the area where God wants to touch, where God wants to change cleanse and use it for his glory to glory to glory let me give you this last feeling right here when god touches me this is just to summarize this whole message when god touches me he'll use me to touch others that's it well, that's what god wants to do that's the purpose of the encounter that's, that's the purpose of why you're here. That's the purpose of why we gather, that you would know God, that, he, that you would know He loves you, He cares about you, He wants to be intimately involved in your life, a personal spirit and presence. He wants to reveal Himself to you so that He can touch you, change you, and use you for His purpose. Right? Three more, three, real quick, let me give you some, I could have said these same points in these ways. You might want to write them down next to the points. Number one, Revelation. Okay, that's what, that's what God wants. He wants to reveal himself to you. Revelation, number two, transformation. Number three, participation. This is the process of an encounter. This is the progression. It goes from revelation to transformation to participation. God wants to get you involved in the process. Now, some of you are looking for an explanation, but that ain't up there. Look, some of you are waiting for an explanation, and God's waiting on your participation. And, and, and you think, it, you're, listen, you're not going to get any more revelation until you, until you start participating in the revelation you've already received. And you have it. A lot of you, you have the word of God. You already have the, you, you know what God wants you to do, has called you to do. And until you start participating in the plan that God has for your life, don't expect more fresh revelation. Revelation, transformation, participation. Now I'm going to give you a moment right now. We're going to encounter God. And you got a moment right now to participate. I mean, you know that God wants to love you. You know he wants to be loved by you. You know he wants to be intimately involved in your life. A personal presence, not something just etched in stone, not something just in the pages of a book, but experienced in a personal relationship with your life. Now you have an opportunity to participate in what God desires and encounter a living personal presence. Now, I want you to stir in this moment or try to bypass it and just sing some lyrics and, and leave. Like right now, open the eyes of your heart in Jesus' name. Let them be enlightened. Reach God from a different place. Reach God not just in your mind, not just in your eyes, not even just in your lips, but let the eyes of your heart be enlightened today for revelation. I'm telling you, if you do, He'll change you. He'll cleanse you. And He'll give you a destiny. He'll give you a purpose to live for. Come on, let's stand to our feet, church. Can we do that together? No matter what, what issues you still have, just like Isaiah, afraid to step into the presence, afraid to lift his hands, afraid like, whoa, I'm unclean. I don't, it doesn't matter what you have and what issues you're still dealing with. God wants to touch you today. He wants to reveal himself to you today. Come on, just declare it with me. Lift up your hands to heaven. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Just as I am, I come. We are so grateful for what God is doing in and through your life, and we want to help you continue on your next step in your relationship with Christ. To find out what your next steps are, go to ilovediscovery.church forward slash next steps. At Discovery Church, it's our mission to teach people to love God passionately, love each other authentically, and change the world for the cause of Christ. And it's that mission that drives everything we do as a church. Join us next week for Football Sunday.